What is the story of God? Is it that book we know as the Bible? Is it the stories we are told in our Sunday school classes? The answer is yes, but there's more to it. Although the stories in the Bible took place a long time ago, we still learn from them today. The Bible is done being written, but guess what? The story of God is far from over, and God invites each of us to be a part of it. Within those 66 books, there's creation, fall, chosen people, kingdom of God, mission, and new creation. There's a single grand narrative throughout the story of God, that God loves us and longs to be in a relationship with each and every one of us. We each have an important role to play within the story of God. Let's discover how we get to be a part of the story of God when we say yes to following Jesus. Hello and welcome back to Confirmation. This is session six and it's about Jesus. You know, like the answer that you use for everything in Sunday school, like who is the son of God? Jesus, right? Uh, who came down to earth in God's form? Jesus. And who wrote Good, Good Father? Uh, Jesus? I mean, that's usually how the answers go in our group, right? When we're asked something really hard in Sunday school, uh, Jesus? Like, that's our answer. But anyways, so we're, I really need some help from you, okay? I'm going to ask you a few questions. I know we're not in the same room together, but you can, you can answer in your group there. So are you ready? These are like rules that your parents have for you. So I'm going to share a few of ours at my home, but you can think of your own. So one of the rules we have is like, um, you got to make your bed every day. But here's the problem. I don't make my bed every day. Therefore, my kids are like, I'm not making my bed every day. You're probably the same. Uh, if I cook, then everybody else has to clean up. That's another rule. So I kind of like cooking because then I don't have to do the dishes because I really don't like doing dishes. One of the other rules that really applies to our teenage students is for every minute that you read, like a book, like an actual book, you know, stuff with paper and writing, then you get a minute of screen time for games or YouTube or Netflix or whatever it is. But finally, the rule in our house is in order to do extra things like sports or plays or anything like that, like you've got to have decent grades. So I don't know if those are normal or familiar to you, but maybe they are. So you can share with your, with your people what your rules are if you want. But... Did you know there's some really crazy rules like in the Bible, like really weird ones? So we're just going to go through a few of them here. Um, one of them is like just simple, like clothes. You can't wear like linen and wool together. I, I don't really understand it, but it was one of the rules, right? Um, one of the other rules is like there's this like whole goat thing, right? Like you can't boil a baby goat in its mother's milk. Like that's really strange. I don't know where that came from either. But then the final one, the final one is you can't eat owls. Like don't eat owls. But like who would want to eat an owl? Did you see what I did there? Who who would want to eat an owl? Anyways, sorry, dad jokes. Uh, so moving on. So all these crazy rules were for a reason. Like it was the way that the people then like lived with God. And the way they lived with God is this thing called a covenant. So a covenant is an agreement which brings about a relationship of commitment between God and God's people. Um, so do you remember like some of the covenants that God had with, with God's people? You know, it's like they go back to like Abraham and stuff like that. But, but essentially it was like this connection that if the Jewish people did what God asked them to do, then God would protect them, specifically Israel, God's people, Israel. But it was really, really hard. Like I, I don't know about the rules I just read for you, but those are, those are weird, hard rules to, to do. So God sent Jesus to become the new covenant. In fact, in John 3, 16, you've seen this, like at sports stadiums and stuff. God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him won't perish, but will have eternal life. And like eternal life sounds pretty good. So God sent his son, Jesus, to be God with us, which is really, really cool. There's this fancy word in church that we use for this. It's called incarnation. God came into the world as Jesus, fully human and fully divine. Did you know that this is like super unique to Christianity? As among all the world religions, Jesus was the only God that came and did fully human and fully divine. Uh, there's a scripture that says, The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. 
We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. In fact, there's a, there's a translation in the Message Bible where he says, God moved into the neighborhood, like, which is really great. God to be here with us is like really stinking cool. Um, I think back of like the clip in Elf, like when Elf is like, Santa, like so excited. Like this should be us that Jesus is here, right? Jesus, like so super excited. So who is this Jesus? We've read about it. We've done these type of things. Um, the Jews thought that Jesus was going to be like the person that wrecked everything, right? That came and took out all of their enemies. Like I kind of picture it to look like this. Thor. Like, you know, Thor from the movies, right? You come down with lightning and destroy all the Jewish enemies. But that's not really what Jesus was. In fact, Jesus was this. We've read this. In the creed, right? And in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell the third day. He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence, he shall come to judge the living and the dead. Now, we're going to get to the resurrection stuff uh, a little bit later. I'm just here to talk about who Jesus was and what Jesus did. Now, Jesus was powerful. Uh, he didn't use it that way, though. Like Thor, he didn't go to destroy enemies. He healed people. He healed skin diseases. He healed paralyzed people. He healed a blind man. He raised people from the dead. Really cool, powerful stuff. He cast out demons. He walked on the water and calm storms around him. So Jesus had the power to do the things that the Jewish people wanted him to do, but he chose something different. This is what I love about Jesus here among us, is he experienced what it was like to be human and to have that care and love for others. There's actually a moment in the Bible where Jesus was like a young man. They talk about teenage Jesus. In fact, I wish there was like way more about teenage Jesus, because it would make like being a youth minister way, way easier. We would just have the answers, right? But anyways, there's this story where Jesus was left behind from his parents for three days. What I love about this story is I have actually done this. <laughs> like not for three days, but like I left my kids at home for a few hours because I thought my wife had them and she thought I had them and everything worked okay. Like nobody was hurt in the making of this story, but it's true. And that's what I love about this story of Jesus is that there's truth in him being here on earth with us. Because Jesus was here on earth, we talk about how cool it is. We talked about how Jesus treated people and we try to do likewise. We get to see how Jesus handled hard things and then we try to do like that as well. We get to see how Jesus listened and led and loved and we go to do likewise. In fact, in Matthew 22, this is one of my favorite things that I lean on over and over. There's a person of the law that looks at Jesus and he says, Jesus, what is the greatest commandment? And Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest commandment. And the second is like it, love your neighbor as yourself. So when I know that Jesus was here on the earth, and I'm struggling with things, I look towards the scriptures, I look towards the stories of Jesus, and I try to do likewise. Amen. Have you ever wondered why in worship we have someone carry in a lighted candle and come to the front of the church and then light a candle on the altar? These light carriers are called acolytes, and many of you may even have the chance to participate as an acolyte in our church's worship service this confirmation year. Well, the reason we do this is because every worship service, we carry in this light to remind ourselves of God's presence in the world and in our lives. Jesus said in John 8:12, I am the light of the world. We light a Christ candle on the altar as a symbol of God's presence with us as we worship together in community. We do this in a big way at Christmas Eve services as we carry the light of Christ into a fully dark sanctuary. Then from one single candle, the, the flame from the Christ candle lights every single one of our individual candles. 
This is our tangible reminder that Jesus came for each and every one of us and Christ's presence is available to us all. I love seeing all of our candles lit up and held high as we sing Silent Night. And now, even as we have been worshiping at our own homes and online, we have been encouraged to light a candle to continue this reminder that God is with us wherever we are. So if you ever need this reminder that God is with you, that you are not alone, then light a candle. Let that light be a reminder to you that you are not alone, that Jesus is with you, and that Jesus loves you so much. <laughs>